Good evening, everybody. Yesterday was a bit of a bust, but tonight... Tonight, we Metal Gear. We gear all of the metal. But yeah, yesterday I, I had to deal with some things, and I couldn't get to my computer to even let people know that the thing was cancelled, so... Blah. Right, I'm um, just gonna let people have a little bit of time to show up in case they want to. And also just to check my, double check my sound settings. It's minus 20, that's fine. So, uh huh. Manjard, uh, yeah, The Outer Worlds is a game I keep meaning to return to, but I keep not having time to return to it. I'm sure I'll finish it up at some point on the channel, it's just not right now. <laughs> But no, there was no particular reason why I stopped. It just happened because of things. Okay. To stop the launch of the new type of nuclear warhead, Snake must use the detonation code emergency override key at the underground maintenance base up north or destroy Metal Gear itself. Snake fights Liquid's Hind D on the roof of the communications tower B and defeats it and gets the, to the snowfield north of the communication tower B. However, Sniper Wolf is waiting for him. After beating her again, Sanic. <laughs> Sanic! Solid to the Sanic! <laughs> Snake and Otacon stay with her until her moment of death. Snake successfully goes through the entrance to the underground maintenance base north of the snowfield and heads for the lower level to get to Metal Gear Underground to the Metal Gear Underground maintenance base. <laughs> Sanic the Solid. <laughs> uh. So, weirdly, I had, like, a, just a crap ton of trouble um, with my emulator recently. Like, I started it up, and even though I hadn't changed any settings, the audio was just glitchy as hell. And there was, like, constant little, like, crackling in the sounds. That I have no idea why any of that was happening. So I was messing around with settings for, like, hours trying to figure it out. And... As far as I can tell, what it turns out to be is that if if I'm running OBS and OBS is like recording the window, it runs perfectly, completely smoothly, as you can hear right now. But if I am just running it on its own, it crackles like a motherfucker. I have no idea why the hell that happens or how that works, but that's apparently the thing. Anyway, let's break that guy's neck. Him wearing a gas mask makes me makes me question why I'm not wearing a gas mask. Whoop. There we go. Got rid of him. So this time, let's actually be a little careful here. Okay, there's something out there, but let's not mess around. Did you limit the FPS on the emulator? Yeah, I tried that. Like, I tried all kinds of different settings. I tried limiting it to 60, to 30, to 59.94. I tried messing with every possible setting on the thing, but no, as it turns out, it just... EPSXE, for some reason, just wants OBS to be running. It has just decided. <laughs> oh yeah, this bit.
Hello, Alaskan field mice. The guard just doesn't see me sitting up here on the wall. Now, you can't move sideways while you're crouched, but I do need to crouch so that that thing will pass over my head. Anytime. Thank you. Okay, let's just be careful. <clears throat> Something I should have been doing throughout the whole game, and which it's kind of silly that I haven't been doing, is use the first person perspective, for example, to see that that guy is heading up here. Probably gonna find me here. No? Sweet! But yeah, as people are talking about in the chat, the, the, the different snakes in, in Metal Gear are quite confusing. Because you have Solid Snake, Liquid Snake, Solidus Snake. Then you have Venom Snake and Punished Snake who are both the same person. Um, and Big Boss, of course, who's also a snake in Metal Gear Solid 3, where he's Solid Snake. Uh, so, you know, uh, that's a whole thing. But basically, there's only one Big Boss, uh, and every other snake is some version of a clone of him, whether by uh, uh, genetics or through psychotherapy that causes people to believe that they are Big Boss, which is a whole thing. Which maybe we'll talk about if we ever play Metal Gear Solid 5 on the channel. <laughs> Let's see. Probably smart to... Ooh, that seems dangerous. Please tell me that doesn't respawn the guards. Probably smart to go and grab as many items as I can get a hold of. No. Nope. Okay. Oh yeah, he's naked snake, not solid snake. Oh well. A snake is a snake is a snake. Well, that's new. Trying not to get burned here. Mostly right now I'm just exploring, because I don't actually remember what you're technically supposed to do here. Gun cameras. Body armor! Oh, fuck yeah. So that's where that is. Guess I can't open that. Nope. Body armor is crazy useful. It reduces the damage you take quite substantially.
So that's going to be very good for certain fights coming up. Yeah, I guess you can hear some audio crackling now. Seriously, have no idea why that happens or what causes it, but this is n not even a little bit as bad as it was previously. Right, so there's a fight coming up. A really annoying one. How many stun grenades do I have? Not that many, okay. Well, alright. Come on. There we go. And this is where the body armor comes in handy. Now it does lock you out of, um... of having your, uh, rations equipped. So you do have to be a little careful, but... Die. Come on. Jeez. But yeah, people are discussing Metal Gear spoilers in the, in the chat. And yeah, basically, since Metal Gear 3, Ocelot has been loyal to the to Big Boss. Ah, fuck off. One thing that gets way easier in the remake is that you can just fucking destroy these fucking cameras. And you don't have to just disable them all the time. Let's see, nothing over there, right? No. Oh, there's mines here. Thank God for the body armor. There's lots of mines here. But most of the, like the Metal Gear deep lore is not really important to Metal Gear 1. Um Metal Gear 1 is is kind of a standalone thing, really. Kojima kind of had to reverse engineer a larger universe and, like, a larger story about the Metal Gear universe as Konami kept demanding more and more Metal Gear games from him. Which is something that Kojima has always sort of, like, the, the sense has always been that he really resented having to do that. Because that's not what he wanted for the series. Like, Kojima wanted to, I think he wanted to end it, like, after Metal Gear uh, Solid 3.
by telling the story of Big Boss, the man who's, like, who, who, who was basically, oh boy, who was basically responsible for a lot of what ended up happening in the games. But Konami kept pushing and pushing and pushing, and so we got Metal Gear Solid 4, which didn't make any goddamn sense, and Metal Gear Solid 5, which is a really fucking good game, but which also introduced a whole bunch of plot holes and retcons and god knows what else in order for Kojima to be able to get something useful out of trying to tell even more stories about Big Boss. And the same thing with stuff like Peace Walker and, you know, things like that. Snake, I've got something to tell you about Naomi Hunter. What about her? Is this conversation secure? Don't worry, the monitor's off. Okay, what's up? I was in the FBI too, you know. I didn't know that. What's your point? Dr. Hunter's story about her background, about her grandfather being an assistant secretary to Hoover in the FBI. Yeah. And then going undercover to investigate the mafia in New York. Yeah, what about it? It was all a big lie. What did you say? It was really bothering me. Why would she lie about it? She lied? She might be a spy. Ridiculous. Come on, even a high school student could see past it. The head of the FBI at that time, Edgar Hoover, he was a well-known racist. Didn't Naomi say that her father was Japanese? Yeah. Well, back then, there wasn't a single Asian investigator. Also, in the 1950s, the undercover mafia sting operations hadn't even started yet. They first started in 1960, in Chicago, not New York. But... You better check it out. The chief and the president mysteriously dying, and that ninja... Too many strange things are happening. Are you saying that Naomi might be behind it? I don't know. Either that, or she's working with the terrorists. Could it be? If I find out anything, I'll call. In the meantime, be careful. Ooh, the plot thickens. have finished their launch preparations. Stop wasting time. Metal Gear's base is up ahead. Snake, it's over 30 below outside. What's wrong? Forget it. Thanks. Snake, stop lollygagging around and get to Metal Gear's base. There's no time. Mei Ling, how's Naomi? Hmm? She's fine, I guess. What's up? Oh. Uh, what do you want, Snake? If you want to talk to Naomi, why don't you call her? Oh, it's nothing. Forget about it. Strange guy. Good luck, Snake. Let's see. Anyone else I can call? Meryl? Nope. Otacon? What the hell are all these crows doing around here? Crows? There were crows, Whoa. There were crows around the floor, but for some reason they started to really, to really increase around the same time that he... Whoa, 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 whoa. ...that Foxhound came to the base. It's really weird, really weird, really weird. I wonder what he... That was a lot of audio glitching. Right, uh, so there's a boss fight coming up, and I need to remember the effective way to fight him, because it's mostly, much like the, like the game keeps trying to vary up how you have to fight the boss fights, and this guy, you cannot fight him head on, like you should not try to do that. So you have to do it in all kinds of other interesting, funny little ways.
Welcome, Cossack. This is the end of the road for you. Right, my friends? Listen, they agree. Ravens aren't scavengers like most people think. They're simply returning to the natural world, that which is no longer needed. Sometimes they even attack wounded foxes. You were the one in the M1 tank? You must have been a tight fit for a big boy like you. <laughs> but that was no true battle. The Ravens and I were testing to see what kind of man you were. The judgment is decided. The Ravens say you are a true warrior. Am I hallucinating? Can't move! The Raven has put the mark of death upon you. Blood from the east flows within your veins. Ah, your ancestors too were raised on the barren plains of Mongolia. Inuit and Japanese are cousins to each other. We share many ancestors, you and I. I don't have any crows in my family tree. <laughs> you jest, but indeed ravens and snakes are not the best of friends. Nevertheless, you will make a worthy adversary. You live in Alaska too. You know of the world Eskimo Indian Olympics? Yeah, I know. A lot of terminology here. Threaten the muck duck eating contest. Yes, you are right. But there is another event that I excel at. It is called the Ear Pull. It is an event where two opponents pull each other's ears while enduring the harsh cold. It tests spiritual as well as physical strength. You want to pull each other's ears? The form is different, but the spirit is the same. Rejoice, Snake! Ours will be a glorious battle. This isn't glorious. It's just plain killing. Violence isn't a sport. Well, we'll see if there is iron in your words. Kojima loves to do his research, but he's also often uh, not 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 necessarily great at thinking through the implications of what he's saying. So as you can see, this guy has a vision cone 12 miles wide. Let's see if I can get his attention. I'm not hiding, jackass. I'm trying to lay a trap for you. And so the game here is to avoid his vision range, because that'll kill you. But also... To hit him. Now, he will see Nikita missiles coming and try to shoot them down. So you have to try and catch him, as it were, off guard. Ah, too far. But yeah, anytime you get in front of him and he sees you and he shoots you with that freaking gun, you just get hurt. So you can't take him on from the front. It has to be like this. With Claymore Mines and Nikita Missiles. Yeah, see, there he saw my missile. Damn it. If only I wasn't so shitty at Nikita. And you're on a bit of a timer, because as you can see, he destroys the environment as he goes. Ow.
which blocks off your paths and can help trap you. Damn it. There we go. But Nikita is definitely the easiest way to fight him for a given value of easy. Yeah, stop shooting them down, you dickhead. And the more health he loses, the faster he moves also. So that's fun. I need to hit him before he sees me. Fuck. Eventually, it becomes way more efficient to... Mm. Eventually, it becomes easier and more efficient to try and lay claymore mines in his path. Okay, I don't know where he is right now. Which is not good. Okay. Now I know where he is. Uh-oh. Oh, our boy is moving fast now. Time to lay down some mines and hope that I can remember where the hell they are. Come on, step on it. Oh, you dick. Ah, that's not good. My rations are frozen. <laughs> Fuck. And audio glitch. Yeah, that's the thing, is like you have to you have to thaw out your rations by holding on to them. Which means you can't be wearing the body armor, and it's very annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Saw that one. Okay, I need to move soon.
be speeding up. Good. Cleared out the fucking Claymore mines. Fuck. <laughs> Jerk. You have got to be shitting me with that. Hey, got him with a... Oh, I'm, I'm getting shot. No, I'm not. Now I am. Ow! Time to wear the rations for a second. I think he's coming this way now. Nice. That was dumb. So as you can see, when he gets hit temporarily, his vision cone gets way smaller. Which you can use to your advantage. Where's he going? He's coming up this way. Yes! Nice! Got him. Just as the boss said, it is my existence which is no longer needed in this world. But... My body will not remain in this place. My spirit and my flesh will become one with the ravens. In that way, I will return to Mother Earth who bore me. Snake! I will be watching you, understand? Snake. Take this security card. It will open that door. Why? You are a snake which was not created by nature. You and the boss. You are from another world. Isekai! That I do not wish to know. Go and do battle with him. I will be watching from above. First, I'll give you a hint. The man who you saw die before your eyes. What is it? Hey, thank you, Crypto. That was not the Dharma Chief. It was Decoy Octopus. A member of Foxhound. He was a master of disguise. He copied his subjects down to the blood. 
So he drained the chief's blood and took it into himself. But he wasn't able to deceive the Angel of Death. The Angel of Death? But why go to so much trouble? Why impersonate the Chief? <laughs> that is the end of my hint. You must solve the rest of the riddle yourself. Snake, in the natural world, there's no such thing as boundless slaughter. There is always an end to it. But you are different. What are you trying to say? The path you walk on has no end. Each step you take is paved with the corpses of your enemies. Their souls will haunt you forever. This is something that, uh... This is, this is an idea that Kojima returns to in Metal Gear Solid 3. Those were some very hungry ravens. But yeah, it's... <laughs> Vulcan Raven is like a whole bunch of slightly uncomfortable Native American it's me, stereotypes. Master. It's about Naomi. Turn your monitor off. What about Naomi? Damn. Colonel, is Naomi there? No, she's away. She's taking a short nap. Hmm. So what is this about Naomi? Okay, maybe we'd better let the Colonel hear this too. Yeah, go on, Master. Well, basically, Dr. Naomi Hunter is not Dr. Naomi Hunter at all. What? I thought her story of her background sounded kind of fishy, so I checked it out. And? There is an actual Dr. Naomi Hunter, or I should say, there was one. But she's not the woman we know. The real Naomi Hunter disappeared somewhere in the Middle East. Our Naomi must have somehow obtained her identification papers. So then who is she really? She must be some kind of... spy. A spy? Yes. Maybe she's been sent to sabotage this operation. Are you saying she's with the terrorists? I don't want to believe it either, but she is working for Foxhound. So you think she had a part in the uprising? Or she could be working with some different group altogether. Different group? It couldn't be. Place her under arrest. What? She's betrayed us. She needs to be arrested and interrogated to find out who she's with. If she's one of their spies, then we're in big trouble. What do you mean? Oh, nothing. Have you let her in on some kind of vital secret or something? Does this have anything to do with the mysterious deaths of the DARPA chief and the arms tech president? I... I have no idea. Anyway, we cannot allow her to participate any further in this mission. Wait, wait a minute. Without her, we can't complete this mission. I knew it. You're hiding something. Give me some time. I'll try to get it out of her. Hurry then. We've got to figure out who she is and what she's doing here. I understand. Snake, give me some time. I don't have any time left for you. Anyway, yeah, Vulcan Raven is a, like, he's a bunch of like First Nations and like old Native American stereotypes kind of rolled into one big uncomfortable clump of like eh, well I can it's nice that you tried to do your research Kojima but uh and it's something that that like Kojima gets better at with time like not doing that kind of thing and he returns to some of the same ideas that Vulcan Raven expresses in Metal Gear Solid 3 and does a better job at it but oh boy And also, by the way, I finally managed to get uh, uh, pop-ups to work for when people send, like, super chats and stuff. So that's nice. Let's see. Any ca- Oh, many cameras. Truly so many cameras. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> Here it's just funny. <laughs> like, here you can just see they're making a joke of it. Hey, mind detector. Yeah, Metal Gear definitely has has a uh, a lot of overlap with like GI Joe's type stereotyping of characters. Anyway, say hello. To Metal Gear. So Keys. And besides that, like Ocelot said, there's some trick to using the keys. Leave it to me. You got some kind of plan? Well, I'm in the computer room right now. I'm trying to access Baker's private files. Baker's files? Don't you need a password? Of course, but there are ways. Are you a hacker? Yep, that describes me pretty well. Does it look like you can get in? I don't know yet. I'll give it a try. I'm counting on you. Well, Philly, if you, if you have sensitivity readers, like, their job is to communicate to you easily. I don't think I've ever heard of anyone having any trouble with it. So there's a trick to the keys here, as we're about to find out. Man is on the case. Well, I mean, yeah, Philippe, like, there, there's always the fear of people thinking you're a bad person, but that's what sensitivity readers are for. It's like, their job is to help you not do that. So, like, generally speaking, they're not super judgmental. You just have to not take their feedback personally. By the way, I love the, uh, I love the Gregor like the monk chanty noises that show up in the music here is like ba 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 like you just walked into Satan uh, like <laughs> you just met Satan himself or something or some apocalyptic threat to the world. What was that noise? Which in a very real way you have. Oh, huh, there was a guard. I don't think I can without triggering an alarm. The aiming is so slow! All oh, right, there. That ladder.
<laughs> Snake, I did it. You got past security? Bingo. Great. So what do you got? I accessed the access the potential metal gear file. So what about the PAL override system that Baker talked about? I haven't found it yet. That's what I need to know. But Snake, I found something else. What? The secret behind the new nuclear weapon. Just as I thought, the nuclear warhead is designed to be fired from the railgun like a projectile. It, it doesn't use fuel, so it isn't considered a missile. That way it can get around all sorts of international treaties. Pretty sneaky. Yes, but effective. And that's not even the scariest thing about this weapon. Oh, I can't wait to hear this. It's a stealth weapon. You mean it won't show up on radar? Yeah. The truth is, they've been working on a stealth missile since the late 70s. Why weren't they able to develop one until now? Because of the missile rocket propulsion system. It would be picked up by enemy satellites. Oh yeah, that makes sense. But unlike a missile, the railgun doesn't burn any propellant, so it can't be detected by any current ballistic missile detection systems. An invisible nuclear warhead. Totally impossible to intercept. And on top of that, it's got a surface-piercing warhead designed to penetrate hardened underground bases. Yeah, we learned that lesson in the Gulf War. This thing could mean the end of the world. It's the ultimate weapon. And from a political point of view, it avoids the problem of nuclear reduction and nuclear inspections. Colonel, is this true? Are you listening? I'm listening. If word of this got out, it could delay the signing of the START III treaty and cause a huge international incident. Yeah, it would be nasty. The United States would be denounced by the UN. It could even bring the president down. Did you know this, Colonel? I'm sorry. You've changed, Colonel. I won't make any excuses. Snake, listen to me. This new nuclear weapon, it's never actually been tested, only simulated. You mean they ran a computer model? Yeah, that's why they were conducting this exercise. They needed to get actual experimental data to back up the simulation. What were the results of the exercise? It looks like it went better than they hoped for, but I can't find the data anywhere on this network. You'd think the data as important as that would be carefully recorded. It was. President Baker gave me an optical disk with all of the test data. What? Do you still have it? No. Ocelot took it from me. Damn. The terrorists have replaced the dummy warhead with a real warhead. Once they input the detonation codes, they should be ready to launch. So you think they can do it? Well, the dummy warhead was designed to be identical to the real thing, so I think so. Did you find out how to override it yet? Not yet. It must be in a separate file. Right now I'm looking through all of Baker's personal files. We're counting on you. So yeah, it might be more difficult for a modern audience to remember because like you you kids weren't alive back then, but um, the threat of nuclear annihilation was the primary fear for human beings for like much of much of human history. Let's see. Hey, guess who's there? Ocelot and Liquid are hanging out. And then we have that single guard. We'll have to deal with. But yeah, nuclear annihilation was like the, like that was the climate crisis basically. Like that, it occupied that space in people's head, this looming, overhanging threat of destruction that people just didn't, like people lived with the assumption that someday the nukes will fly and we are all of us gonna, you know, die. Thank you for being super blind, my friend. Ooh. 
Yeah, nuclear annihilation is still very real, but because of the fall of the Soviet Union, because of the general de-escalation of nuclear threat outside of um, threats like dirty bombs and like terrorists getting their hand hands on nuclear material, it's not this pervasive, constant, overarching presence in all of our pop culture. Snake, did you find it? No, I haven't found out about the override system yet, but I found Baker's ulterior motive. He's just looking to get rich, isn't he? Well, that's part of it. Armstech is in much worse financial trouble than I thought. I know they lost their bid to make the next generation fighter jet. That plus the reduction in SDI spending. Hello, Kuba. In fact, there was even some talk of a hostile takeover. Everything was riding on this project, I guess. And it looks like we were paying a lot of bribe money to the DARPA chief. Bribe money, huh? Yeah. And Baker was a big proponent of the nuclear deterrent theory. I see. So anyway, what about the override? Just give me a little bit longer. But yeah, it used to be like not that long ago, like in, in the it, up until the late 80s, it was normal for kids like as part of their school curriculum to be taught what to do in the event of a nuclear strike. Like they would they would be given instructions on how to behave in case the bombs start falling, where the shelters are, where to go, how to respond to an invasion by Soviet soldiers, you know. So this was a very very real and just extremely terrifying part of so many people's lives all of the time. Yeah, someone in chat points out it's kind of like uh, school shootings nowadays. It's kind of like that. It's this threat that was just constantly present in people's minds and in people's perception of reality, and it warped everything. And it was in culture as well. Like, look at that, like, that frickin' Rocky movie where he fights the Soviet super soldier dude. And the Rambo films. Like, it's... It was everywhere. It pervaded everything. And it's something that's definitely affected Kojima profoundly. Okay, I've entered the PAL codes and disengaged the safety device. We can launch any time. There's still no response from Washington. It looks like we'll have to show them that we mean business. Should I set it for Chernotin, Russia? No, there's been a change. The new target is Lochnor, China. Why, boss? I'm sure neither you nor Mr. Golukovich would really like to see a nuclear bomb dropped on your motherland, right? Liquid. But why? There's nothing there. Wrong. It's a nuclear test site. A nuclear test site? If we nuke a major population center, the game's over. But a nuclear explosion at a test site can still be concealed from the public. Meanwhile, Washington will be worried about the retaliatory strike from China. That'll probably mean top-secret talks between both countries' leaders. Of course. And in the process, the President will be forced to divulge the existence of a new and highly destabilizing nuclear weapon to the Chinese. What do you think that will do to the U.S.'s reputation? Or the President's? And with the CTBT, that means that China and India... I see. Yes. When the other countries hear about this new weapon, they'll all want to contact us. Washington won't be very happy when we start selling their own system to the highest bidders. Yes, the president will break. He will give in to our demands. Big bosses deal. Yeah, it looks very fuzzy. Billion dollars. Billion dollars. That money will be used to cure our genome soldiers as well. I'm also including the fox dye vaccine in our demands. Fox dye. It killed Octopus and the arms tech president. So it's true that it affects older people first. Mantis might not have been affected but wore a mask. Ah shit. Wolf wasn't infected either. 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 Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Either. 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 Hang on. Those tranquilizers, tranquilizers, tranquilizers she always took. There we go. Something to do with the adrenaline level in the blood. Or maybe it's just because Fox died. We're still experimental, and they haven't worked out all the bugs yet. In any case, have you heard from your friend, Colonel Sergei Golukovich, at the Spetsnaz? He still has doubts about the ability of Metal Gear. He said we can talk after Metal Gear's test launch is successful. Hmm, he's a very prudent man. There's nothing to worry about. 
Colonel wants Metal Gear and a new nuclear weapon so bad he can taste it. If Russia wants to regain its position as a military superpower, they need to reinforce their nuclear arsenal. They need a nuclear weapon that can't be intercepted. Metal Gear will allow them to gain first strike capability over the rest of the world. Their regular army is in shambles, and they think they can restore their country's military power with nuclear weapons? Golugovich, he's no warrior. He's a politician. But he's the one who gave us the Hind and most of our other heavy firepower. He's got over a thousand soldiers under his command. If we join forces, we could put up quite a resistance here. Since Mantis died, the genome soldier's brainwashing has started to wear off. I'm worried about the men's morale. An alliance with the Russians would boost that as well. What do you say? We're not going anywhere. We're going to dig in here. We could still escape. We've got the most powerful weapon ever made, and we're about to ally with Galukovich's forces. Are you going to fight the whole world? And what's wrong with that? We can launch a nuclear warhead at any target on this planet. A nuclear warhead invisible to radar. And on top of that, this base is full of spare nuclear warheads. Once we get the DNA and the money, the world will be ours. What about your promise to Colonel Golukovich? I have no interest in the revival of Mother Russia. You're not thinking of reviving Big Boss's dream. From today, call this place Outer Heaven. Big Boss's dream. But Boss, you're not worried about the PAL being overridden. If the code is in it again, it'll be deactivated. No need to worry. The DARPA chief and the arms tech president are both dead. Does Snake know how the override system works? You interrogated him, don't you know? He didn't have any keys on him. Good. Then no one can stop Metal Gear now. By the way, what should we do with that woman? Want me to kill her? Let her live. She's Campbell's niece, and Snake cares for her. We'll keep her as our ace in the hole. Meryl, she's alive. Lots of plot happening. I'll talk a little bit later. Snake, I found Baker's top secret files. Great job. How's it going there? They've finished inputting the PAL codes. So how do we deactivate them? Okay. You see, the override system that the President was talking about, it can also be used to input the detonation codes. You see, if you insert the keys when the warhead is active, you deactivate it. And if you insert them when it's inactive, it becomes activated. And you can only use the keys once. Only once, huh? Yeah. You better get started. We don't have much time. But it takes three keys, right? I've only got one of them. Hold on a minute. You see, that's the trick. You already have all three keys. What are you talking about? The card key is made of a shape memory alloy. Shape memory alloy? Yes. It's a material that changes shape at different temperatures. The key is made out of it. This card key? Yeah. The card key changes shape at different temperatures. So this key is actually three keys in one. Clever. Can you see the input terminals in the center of the control room? I see them. Those three laptop terminals are for the emergency input. There should be a symbol on each screen. Each symbol corresponds to a different key. Input the keys in order from left to right. The left one's for the room temperature key. See the symbol? Next to that goes the low temperature key. The one on the right is the high temperature key. Okay, I got it. First, I change the shape of the card, and then I input them in order, right? That's right. All you do is insert the card keys. After you insert the key into the module, a hard disk reads the information contained on it. Once you've finished with all three terminals, the code input process is complete. But here's the thing. You can only use the key three times. It's an emergency system. It's only meant to be used once. The world is riding on that key, Snake. Who's that? Damn. <laughs> of course. The key fell in the drainage ditch. Snake, this is bulletproof glass. There's no way in. I'll enjoy watching you die. 
<laughs> oh no. Snake, you've got to get that key. Okay, do I have to have a fight now? I don't remember. Yes, I do. Okay. So the reason why things look weird and blurry sometimes, it's an effect. It's Okay, so remember at the start of the stream how I talked about how I had to mess around with a million different settings in order to get um, the thing to stop lagging like a motherfucker? Yeah, one of the settings I changed is one that changes how it displays certain filters that are supposed to display um, when you... Like, when you go through the game like this. And this game especially makes use of a hell of a lot of experimental and rather clever, but also difficult for an emulator to replicate filter effects. Okay. I don't think they can reach me here. And so that's why uh, some of the... Uh, some of the things don't look the way that they're supposed to. Okay, I believe here I have a safe area. And now, to get the fuck out of here. We need to get the key, which means we need to figure out where the hell it is. Aiming in this game sucks! Right. We need to go find the key. And then we need to change it in. So here, this is just like a big fuck around section, really, in the game. That I've never really liked. Um, because we have to go first of all find the key. But we also have to uh, get the key to those different critical temperatures in order to change its shape. Which means we have to go to the blast furnace to get the heat, and we have to go to the freezer where Vulcan, Vulcan Raven was to get the cold, and it's like, it's a whole thing. Why didn't Liquid and Ocelot just kill Snake right then and there? That's an interesting question. A question that might be answered. Okay, let me just check. There aren't any soldiers down here, right? No. This part is better in the remake. Yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of good changes were made in the remake. Along, like, a lot of quality of life changes and stuff like that. Along with some of the sillier, ridiculous cutscenes and stuff that were implemented. Yeah. Bad. Okay, uh, it's somewhere down here. But this is toxic waste. So you don't want to spend any more time down here than you have to.
SOCOM bullets, rations. Where the hell is it? Yeah, because it's not outside of here. I don't think. But I also don't remember where it is. The rats got it. Really? There's a rat in here? I don't remember that at all. It's been so long since I played this game. Oh, I see. If you use the mind detector, you should be able to find it. That's right. And let's just wait for the chaff to clear. There it is. Found it. Why would you pick that up, Snake? There we go. Okay. So now I have... the key back. You got the card key. Get back to the control room and use that key to re-input the PAL codes. Stop that launch. Oh yeah, sure, I'll just walk into the place where Revolver, Ocelot, and Liquid Snake are waiting for me. I'll just do that. Thanks, Campbell. Useful information from you. Up the ladders. And over Metal Gear. The thing is, like, I could plant so much C4 on this thing right now. Excuse me. Just gonna wait for my friend to stop by. Oh, little soldier boy! I've got a surprise for you! If you would just stop by and collect it, that would be lovely. Oh, you're going to enjoy the taste of this? Give me your thing. Oh, you have a ration. Nice. Right. Really wish I could just shoot those fucking cameras. Uh, pal key, pal key, where are you? Thank you. Uh, 
Ah, 1990s laptop noises. Can I still stinger the cameras? Number two, for he's the key. Frickin' like that. Oh yeah, I can. Piss off! Oh, that's so much better. Ah, peace and quiet. Can't remember if they stay gone after I leave, but... I don't think the soldier down here... Oh, he respawns. Well, damn it. That's inconvenient. No, nothing over here? Sorry, dude. You just you're just not very lucky. <laughs> right. So now we need to freeze the key, which means we need to go to somewhere that's cold. Somewhere that's cold. We need to get frozen. Dun. But yeah, like like I was talking about earlier, like especially in the 80s, the idea of a nuclear weapon, like because a lot of, of like the nuclear arms race was focused especially around um, deterrence and interception. Like so there was a lot of talk about missile shields, um, the Reagan era project Star Wars, which was supposed to use space based weapons in order to like basically shoot down nuclear weapons before they could reach a target. A lot of international policy and indeed military spending was focused around preventing nuclear strikes from happening. And what's terrifying about Metal Gear in in the context of the original game is that it circumvents all known nuclear countermeasures at the time. You can't tell when the weapon is launched because it doesn't have, like, you don't need a rocket platform. You don't need an ICBM to launch the weapon. So there's no way for, like, early warning detection systems to see that a nuclear weapon is incoming because it's ballistics. It circumvents uh, interception systems because it doesn't have because it doesn't have a rocket engine. There's no heat signature for any interception rockets to latch onto, and it's just overall just an absolutely terrifying idea. Oh right, I remember these cameras can't actually see you. Fuck! No! Son of a bitch! That was dumb. Those cameras can see you. Why couldn't they see me before? Fuck you! Okay, this time we run faster. Hello, pal key, would you please freeze?
I'm crawling on the ground. I'm running around in a freezer. Do I need to not have it equipped? Let's just pick up whatever's lying around down here. If anything. Yeah, I know. I'm just wondering whether I have to have it equipped or not equipped. Well, pretty much just have to wait for the damn thing to freeze now. There we go. Finally. Took a while. But like, yeah, the reason the Metal Gear is a is a mech is, first of all, rule of cool. Like, Kojima just liked that idea. But it's also because it's supposed to be a mobile battle tank walker. Like, it's supposed to be a thing which can launch a nuclear warhead from anywhere on the planet. So, like, it can walk over mountains, it doesn't need roads. That's sort of, that's the basic idea of it. Anyway, just gonna chaff him. And, like, it's, it's extremely, you know, ridiculous anime sci-fi nonsense. Like, there's no reason why Ray would be a, a walking battle tank in real life, because that stuff just breaks down way too easy. But in anime world, of course it's a mech. And also, it's worth it's worth noting that Otacon thought that he was making a missile defense system. He thought he was making like a device to make nuclear weapons basically unfeasible by making by making this railgun armed Metal Gear Rex that can shoot down nuclear missiles from pretty much anywhere uh, on the planet. But that, of course, is not what the U.S. government wanted him to make <clears throat> in the fiction of the story. The good thing about the original is that every sniper rifle shot is a headshot by automatically. That's lovely and convenient. No, the game does not differentiate okay. between head and body shots. That technology wasn't really available at the time. Next comes pal number three. Warm the key. And now we need to go to the goddamn blast furnace. Hmm. 
Yeah, <laughs> shove the key in your butt. Yeah. <laughs> Aw, oh, come on! Didn't that kill him in one? Seriously? The Claymore didn't kill him? No, it did. That reminds me, I should really go find... No, it didn't. God damn it. I should really go find the SOCOM suppressor so I can kill these guys silently. There we go. That killed him. Okay, time to go to the Blast Furnace. And this is like a really annoying section of the game where you basically just have to run back and forth between different areas. And there really, there isn't a lot there. Hello? Once you notice that little pulsing tone, you never get it out of your head. Metal Gear Ray in Metal Gear Solid 2 is basically designed to be an anti-Metal Gear weapon. It's designed to make metal weapons like Metal Gear Rex irrelevant by countering them. Oh, right. The soldier's here now. Ugh. So annoying. Are you gonna turn? Yep. Yeah. Go away. I should really go get that suppressor. They finally cleared away <laughs> his his weapons. But yeah, it, Metal Gear Solid 2 concerns itself less with the threat of nuclear destruction and deals a lot more with, like, uh, information control as a future site of warfare and population control and stuff like that. Where Kojima is actually very prescient in a lot of the things that he predicts in that game. Scarily prescient in some cases.
it's about Naomi Hunter, then you should talk to the Colonel. He's looking into it. Turn your monitor off. Okay, it's off. No one else can hear us. Go ahead. Sorry, but I didn't want the Colonel to hear. Okay, so what's up? I've got a good friend in the Pentagon. Yeah? He's the one who told me about it. It looks like the DIA recently developed a new type of assassination weapon. An assassination weapon? Snake, have you ever heard of something called Fox Dye? No. Fox Dye. Liquid and the others were talking about it. Yeah. It's some kind of virus that, that targets specific people. I don't know all the details, but... What are you trying to say? It's too similar. What is? The cause of death. Didn't the arms tech president and the DARPA chief, I mean, decoy octopus, die of something that looked like a heart attack? Yeah. Well, apparently, Fox Die kills its victims by simulating a heart attack. No. You're telling me that Naomi was behind it? Snake, try to remember. Did Naomi give you some kind of injection? The nanomachines. She was in the best position to have done it, but I don't know what her motive was. Does the Colonel know? I'm not sure. But he still hasn't questioned her. Okay, I'll ask him myself. Colonel, what's new with the Naomi situation? I just placed Naomi under arrest. Arrest? She was sending coded messages towards the Alaskan base. I didn't want to believe it, but she must be working with the terrorists. Are you sure? I'm afraid so. She's being interrogated now. What kind of interrogation? Well, I'd like to avoid the rough stuff, but we don't even have any sodium pentothal here. Call me if you find out anything. So it's true, isn't it? Naomi, I can't believe it. That means the Fox Dye vaccine must be around somewhere. Listen, I've got bigger things to worry about. But Snake, you might be infected too, you know. All I can do is leave it up to the Colonel. Oh, we'll get Naomi's story as we go, Frainer, don't worry. But yeah, as people are talking about in chat, Konami basically, f like, they... Maybe it's a little coarse to say they forced him, but they definitely pressured him very, 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 very strongly to keep making Metal Gear games. And to keep, like, advancing the story and coming up with new ideas and... Th and he had to stretch things pretty hard uh, to meet that demand. And, like, they wouldn't... They, and quite simply, they wouldn't let him work on anything else. Oh, fuck, there was another one. Of course there was. And so that's one of the reasons why Metal Gear became so convoluted, is that Kojima kept thinking, okay, Metal Gear 3 is going to be the last one. Okay, Metal Gear 4 is going to be the last one. Okay, Metal Gear 5 is going to be the last one. So he kept riding himself into corners and like, tying up all kinds of loose ends. But then in order to have the story keep going, he had to invent new loose ends to tie up, and he had to retcon things out of existence in the old stories. And, like, the, the whole team, basically, were always working under crunch and pressure from Konami management to, like, to make the games as fast as possible. And Konami management hated Kojima because he didn't work fast. He didn't want to work fast. He wanted to be an auteur. And that's why Metal Gear is so weird. And like, that's... Or it's part of the reason. That's also because Kojima is an auteur. Like, he is a capital A auteur weirdo. And he loves being that. Oh, fuck off. How the fuck was it not seeing me when I was crouched and then the moment I get up? Ugh. Kojima was trying in Metal Gear Solid 5, like, <clears throat> he was really trying to out to live up to, like, all, like, to try and, okay, fine, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this as a very ambitious project. But Konami got impatient, and they pressured him into finishing, or rather releasing the game way before it was finished, and so it ended up a little bit of a mess 
in a lot of ways. Like, it, it didn't really wrap itself up very well. What would have happened if Metal Gear happened when Kojima had his own company? I mean, without the structural and financial support from Konami, it wouldn't have happened, ever. So that's kind of hard to say. I don't think it's as simple as, oh, just like Kojima, if, if Kojima Productions had existed before and he hadn't been trapped with Konami, he would have made the good Metal Gear games that he wanted instead of the mess that we got. I don't think it's that simple, because like as we saw with Death Stranding, Kojima is perfectly capable of making a convoluted mess that feels a little bit weird and unfinished all on his own. <laughs> he doesn't need Konami to pressure him into that. But certainly, like, Konami and Kojima did not have a positive working relationship a lot of the time. That's, like, as far as as reporting around around that relationship has, has gone, it's been pretty clear. Okay. Ah, fuck. Okay, can't aim up far enough to... This should be okay, because they can't find me down here. Why the fuck did I fall in? Well, the key should be hot now. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Fine, I'll leave the ration alone. <laughs> it's right there, though. Should be able to get it. Eh. Anyway, I think... I think I'm supposed to take it in here, because it's hotter in here. Speaking of mailing, let's save. What can I do for you, Snake? Haven't saved in a while, probably best to do that. Don't forget to save your memories of me too. You can't save memories even on that system of yours. Memories are fragile things. After you reduce them to binary numbers and send them through the air, they're not memories anymore. I wouldn't be so sure of that. There's nothing my system can't do. Memories aren't just sounds and pictures. They exist somewhere between the sounds, between the picture. 
I don't get it. Anything can be done digitally. If that's true, why don't you go ahead and try to say what I'm thinking right now? I can't say that type of thing. You have to put it into words at least. That's right. And that's what memories are. Wordless. I don't know about that. No matter how far data technology advances, you'll never be able to penetrate the human heart. You're wrong. It's just a matter of time. But first you have to try to understand human emotions, Mei Li. And how do I do that? You have to allow yourself to fall in love with someone. Stop being so horny, Snake! Jesus Christ! Watch out for the steam. It's dangerous. Use your first-person view mode to see where the steam is coming out, and then avoid it. Yeah, I like a sauna now and then, but this is too much. Let's see if they have anything to say otherwise. So Naomi's a spy, just like I thought. Campbell is hiding something too. But that's okay. Fox dye is a virus, a biological weapon. There must be a vaccine. We can worry about getting that later, Snake. But right now, you've got to focus on re-inputting those detonation codes, okay? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Palky, would you like to please... Uh, I guess we just have to wait now. There we go. Now let's try not to get it frozen on the way back, because that would be annoying. Okay, almost there. Getting there. busy right now. I'm on a different codec. Naomi, is what the colonel says true? Yes, but not everything I said was a lie. Who are you? I don't know myself. I don't know my real name or even what my parents looked like. I bought all my identification, but my reason for getting into genetics was true. Because you want to know yourself, right? That's right. I want to know where I came from. My, my age, my race, anything. Naomi. I, I was found in Rhodesia sometime in the 80s. A dirty little orphan. Rhodesia? What's now known as Zimbabwe? Yes. Rhodesia was owned by England until 1965, and there were lots of Indian laborers around. That's probably where I got my skin color from, but I'm not even sure about that. Naomi, you're too worried about the past. Isn't it enough to understand who you are now? Understand who I am now? Why should I? No one else tries to understand me. I was alone for so long. Until I met my big brother. And him. Your big brother? Yes. 
Frank Yeager. What? He was a young soldier when he picked me up near the Zambezi River. I was half dead from starvation, and he shared his rations with me. Yes, Frank Yeager. The man who you destroyed was my brother and my only family. No. Gray Fox? We survived that hell together, Frank and I. He protected me. He's my one connection. The only connection I have to my past. And he brought you back to America? No. I was in Mozambique when he came. Who was he? You mean Big Boss? Yes. He brought us to this land of freedom. This America. And then he and my brother went back to Africa to continue the war. And that's when it happened. You killed my benefactor and sent my brother home a cripple. I vowed revenge and joined Foxhound. I knew it was my best chance to meet you and I prayed for the day that I would. So, were your prayers answered? Yes. I waited two long years. To kill me? Is that all you cared about? Yes. That's right. Two years. You were all I thought about for two long years. Like some kind of twisted obsession. Do you still hate me? Not exactly. I was partly wrong about you. What about Liquid and the others? <laughs> I'll have my revenge on them, too. Naomi, you didn't kill that doctor, too, did you? The one that used Gray Fox for his genome experiments? Dr. Clark? No. That was my brother. Afterwards, I covered it up and helped him hide out. So that ninja... I mean, Gray Fox... He's come here to kill me? I don't think so. I think he just came here to fight you. I wasn't sure before, but now I think I understand. A final battle with you. That's all he lives for. I'm sure of it. Fox. No. Naomi, tell me something. About Fox Die? Fox Die is a type of retrovirus that targets and kills only specific people. First, it infects the macrophages in the victim's body. Fox dye contains smart enzymes created through protein engineering. They're programmed to respond to specific genetic patterns in the cells. Those enzymes recognize the target's DNA? Right. They respond by becoming active and using the macrophages they begin creating TNF Epsilon. Huh? It's a type of cytokine, a peptide which causes cells to die. The TNF Epsilon is carried along the bloodstream to the heart, where they attach to the TNF receptors in the heart cells. And then... they cause a heart attack? The heart cells suffer a shock and undergo an extreme apoptosis. Then... the victim dies. Apoptosis? You mean the heart cells commit suicide? Naomi... What? You must have programmed that thing to kill me too, right? Do I still have time? Naomi, I don't blame you for wanting me dead, but I can't go yet. I still have a job to do. Listen, Snake. I'm not the one who made the decision to use Fox Die. Huh? You weren't? No. You were injected with Fox Die as a part of this operation. I just wanted to let you know that. No, that's not the whole truth. Huh? The real thing I wanted to tell you was... God damn it, not Snake. now. Hey, what are you... What are you... <gasps> Snake! Naomi! Snake. I can't allow Naomi to make any more unauthorized transmissions. What? Naomi's been removed from this operation. What happened to Naomi? What did she mean when she said that Fox Die was a part of this operation? Colonel, let me talk to her. I won't. She's under arrest. Colonel, you double-crossed me. Snake, there's no time for that. 
Right now, your job is to stop Metal Gear. Okay, Snake? So, yeah. We have a deadly virus in our system. Anyway. Have to get through this area a little bit quickly, or at least try to. So what we're gonna do... Is that good. I was worried they'd see me, but I guess I was fine. Okay. Oh, what happens to the nuclear weapons expert? That's actually true. I've completely forgotten to call her. Uh, let's see. Metal Gear Solid Tasha Kodak. Uh, let's see. Let me just find it. Ah, 14152. to work with you, Solid Snake. You're the nuclear specialist that the Colonel mentioned? That's me. You can ask me anything about nukes that you want. I am also a military analyst, so I have an extensive knowledge of weapon systems as well. They asked me to participate in this operation as a supervisor from the Nuclear Emergency Search Team. I was happy to accept. We must not allow terrorists to get their hands on nuclear weapons of any kind. I hope I can help you to stop them. You're a tough lady. Those terrorists are serious about launching a nuclear weapon? The world cannot stand by idly and allow that to happen, and neither can I. Unfortunately, all I can do from here is provide you with information. Hopefully that'll be enough. Another soldier here wouldn't make a difference anyway. It's good to work with you, Nastasha. Same here, Snake. So that is Nastasha Romanenko, um, who is actually kind of important to the plot, but not really. Like, there's a reason why I haven't called her through this entire playthrough, is because all she provides is background information. Nastasha, I'm going to ask you one more time. See, because... <laughs> anything about Fox Die and the real nature of this operation? Sorry, I have not been told anything about that. That's funny. The Colonel said almost exactly the same thing. Sorry, I didn't mean to sound sarcastic. I believe you. That's a chaff grenade. It's a special grenade that disperses thin, narrow metallic strips of various lengths and frequency responses. It can confuse electronic equipment. It will be useful against machines which depend upon electronic sensors. Naturally, for it to be effective, you must use it before you are attacked. If you are expecting an attack, spread the chaff beforehand. And that's the kind of thing that Nastasha um, will do when you call her. Like, if I hold a FAMAS... That is a FAMAS. It is a bullpup-style assault rifle. It is durable and easy to use. Very resistant to overheating. It is a reliable weapon with smooth action. It can fire up to 1,000 rounds per minute. On full auto, you will empty a 25-round magazine in a few seconds. So, like, any... So, th there's... Endless. Like, good lord, there's a lot of stuff we can get to t tell you about. C4, Claymore, Stun Grenades, Chaff Grenades, your PSG-1. And I think she also does... Uh, like, you think you can... Have her talk about, like, uh the night vision goggles as well. Those are night vision goggles. They do not use... Not 
have used special lenses. They electronically amplify the light by transforming it into electric signals, which they then boost to create an image. They amplify the light 100,000 times. You will be able to see 500 meters by starlight, just as if it was day. But it won't work in complete darkness since there is no light to amplify. Those night vision goggles will make your eyes hurt after a while. Do not use them for too long a period of time. But she is definitely... Like, she is best girl <laughs> of, of the ladies on the team just because of the goddamn artwork. Like, she's got that smoldering Soviet blonde thing down pat. But yeah, the reason... So her important to the importance to the plot is that you know how when we load a game um, we get these mission logs and you know how um, at the very very start of this playthrough I sat through this entire briefing and we saw all those files come down like with various names and stuff like that that's meant to be her research material like information and material that she gathered while she was part of the mission which eventually forms the basis for a book that she writes about the whole thing that then, like, the conceit of the game is that this this game is sort of a, a staging of her book, as it were. Which is all very cool and all, but, like, you don't ever need to call her at any point during the game. <laughs> uh, let me just see for a sec. All right. Because his artwork for Nastasha, I'm going to put a link to it down in the uh, in the chat. There we go. That is uh, Yoji Shinkawa's artwork for Nastasha Rob Romanenko. And Yoji Shinkawa's artwork is just such a cool part of Metal Gear, like... Okay, I should probably kill that guy quickly. No. Headshot. <laughs> Do I need to eat a ration then? Might as well. Anyway, just check the pal key to see. Yes, still warm. Good. Thank God. Nastasha, not Sastasha. Doing, doing, doing. Ah, glitches. We just activated the nuclear warhead. We didn't deactivate it. Thank you, Snake. Now the detonation code is completed. Nothing can stop Metal Gear now. Master, what's going on? You found the key, and even activated the warhead for us, too. I really must express my gratitude. Sorry to have involved you in that silly shape memory alloy business. What are you talking about? We weren't able to learn the DARPA chief's code. Even with Mantis' psychic powers, he couldn't read his mind. Then Ocelot accidentally killed him during the interrogation. In other words, we weren't able to launch the nuclear device, and we were all getting a little worried. Without the threat of a nuclear strike, our demands would never be met. What do you mean? 
Without the detonation codes, we had to find some other way. That's when we decided you might prove useful, Snake. What? First, I thought we might get the information from you, Snake, so I had Decoy Octopus disguise himself as the DARPA chief. Unfortunately, Octopus didn't survive the, the encounter, thanks to Fox Die. You mean you had this plan from the beginning, just to get me to input the detonation code? Huh? <laughs> you didn't think you made it this far by yourself, did you? Who the hell are you? In any case, the launch preparations are complete. Once the world glimpses the power of this weapon, the White House will have no choice but to surrender the Fox Dye vaccine to me. Their ace in the hole is useless now. Ace in the hole? The Pentagon's plan to use you was already successful in the torture room. <laughs> Snake, you're the only one who doesn't know. Ah, oh, poor fool. Who are you anyway? I'll tell you everything you want to know. If you come where I am, that is. Where are you? Very close by. Snake, that's not Master Miller. Really? You're too late. Master Miller's body was just discovered at his home. He's been dead for at least three days. I didn't know because my codec link with Master was cut off. But Mei Ling said his transmission signal was coming from inside the base. So who is it? Snake, you've been talking to... Me, dear brother. Liquid, how the... You've served your purpose. You may die now. Ah, gas. Fortuitously, I have mask. Now, how do I get out of here? Yeah, not with a card. Just for fun, I'll break the cameras. Hmm. Snake, gas, do something. Snake, Paul Emmerich. Ah, right. I have a hacker on my side. Ah, fuck off. Okay, let's try and weapon. There we go. Open the security lock here. I'll try. Just hold on for a minute. Oh, hey. Hello, Liquid. Are the Patriots hacking into the stream? <laughs> Trying to prevent me from exposing their secrets. Liquid! Snake! Did you like my sunglasses? You Why do I have a suppressor now? Why did you disguise yourself as master? So I could manipulate you more easily. And you performed quite well, I must say. Although the boys at the Pentagon are probably saying the same thing. What the hell are you talking about? Following orders blindly with no questions asked, you've lost your warrior's pride and become nothing more than a palm snake. What? Stopping the nuclear launch, rescuing the hostages, it was all just a diversion. A diversion? The Pentagon only needed for you to come into contact with us. 
That's what killed the arms tech president and decoy octopus. You don't mean... That's right. You were sent here to kill us so they could retrieve Metal Gear undamaged, along with the bodies of the genome soldiers. From the beginning, the Pentagon was just using you as a vector to spread Fox Die. Fox Die? It can't be. Are you telling me Naomi was working with the Pentagon? They thought she was, but it seems that Dr. Naomi Hunter couldn't be controlled so easily. What? We've got a spy working in the Pentagon. He reported that Dr. Hunter altered Fox Dye's program just before the operation, but no one knows how or why. I wonder... Maybe they arrested her so they could find out the answer to that. No doubt. But I had no idea she was motivated by such petty revenge. We still don't know what changes she made to Fox Dye's program. Oh well, it doesn't matter. I've already added the Fox Dye vaccine to my list of White House demands. There's a vaccine? There must be, but that woman is the only one who really knows. Anyway, it might prove to be unnecessary. Why's that? You were successful in coming into contact with all of us, so we must have all been exposed to the virus. It's true that the Armstead President and Decoy Octopus were killed by Fox Dye. But Ocelot, myself, and you, the carrier, were apparently unaffected. A bug in the virus's programming? Hmm. Could be. In any case, if it doesn't kill you, then I'm not worried either. After all, our genetic code is identical. So it's true. You and I are... Yes, twins. But we're not ordinary twins. We're twins linked by cursed genes. Les enfants terribles! Les enfants terribles. You got all the old man's dominant genes. I got the flawed recessive genes. Everything was done so that you would be the greatest of his children. The only reason I exist is so they could create you. I was the favorite, huh? That's right. I'm just the leftovers of what they used to make you. Can you understand what it's like to know that you're garbage since the day you were born? But, I'm the one Father chose. So that's why you're so obsessed with Big Boss. Some warped kind of love. Love? It's hate! He always told me I was inferior, and now I'll have my revenge! <laughs> you should understand me, brother. You killed our father with your own hands! You stole my chance for revenge! Now I'll finish the work that father began. I will surpass him. I will destroy him. You're just like Naomi. Well, I'm not like you. Unlike you, I'm proud of the destiny that is encoded into my very genes. Yeah. Snake, your blood will be the first to be spilled by this glorious new weapon. Consider it an honor. A gift from your brother. Now I'll show you the power of the weapon that will lead us in the 21st century. It's moving. How do I stop it? Here comes the fun part. Oh yeah, Liquid Snake is in Metal Gear Solid 5. He's just not called Liquid at the time. Okay. Uh, let's get the body armor on because, frankly... No? Okay. 
Ooh, probably shouldn't hide behind that. Ow. Too, too close to a wall there. Okay, uh, let's just call Otacon. Anyway, uh, Chaff Grenade. And then... Ah, shit. Yeah, if I hadn't had the body armor on, that would have killed me outright. Fuck off! This fight can be very frustrating. Not now. Oh god. How well, how bad did it glitch? Pretty badly. Okay, uh, excuse me a sec. There we go. Okay, you guys can't hear it anymore now. Really? Uh, it glitched. F. F in chat. When did I last save? Yeah, don't mock me, Konami. I think it was a while since I last saved. It was in the blast furnace while I was trying to warm up the key, right? Yeah. Ow. Anyway, we'll be able to skip through the cutscenes this time, so it won't take us long to get back to where we were. <laughs> What's the scariest question you can ask a gamer? When did you last save? Yeah, that shit was scary back in the day. Like, when, when like, uh, if you bought, like, an off-brand memory card, and it failed, and all of your save games were just, like, gone, that was fucking terrifying. F for progress. Respects have been paid again. Thank you, Galen.
Would you just heat up already, you stupid key? That's why you save before fighting a boss, kids. Yeah. Yeah, I really should have. I really should have. There we go. All right, here we go again. But yeah, I think we can probably finish this game um, in this stream with a little bit of luck. Unless, of course, it keeps glitching or something, which would be very annoying. Stop going up against the goddamn wall, Snake, you moron. <laughs> Near Automata Route C flashbacks. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we know. We know, Naomi. We know. We'll just, uh, hurry through that. I'd give my life not for honor, but for you. In time. There'll be no... No, you can't hold triangle to skip through conversations. That's something they added in Metal Gear 2, that you could hold down a button and it would kind of speed through. But in the original... You have to press buttons manually. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna save before putting the last code in, and then I'm gonna save after Liquid reveals himself, just to be sure. Because we're not doing that again. Yep, give me those chef. I'll need them. I'll need that ration too. Actually, this reminds me. So a smart thing that I should do with my big brain is respawn that chaff crate a few times so I can have enough chaff to deal with Rex. No? Can't respawn it like that? Fine. Two rooms it is. Uh oh. Ah, uh, but the key's gonna get cold. Eh, damn it. Okay. Hmm. I'll just have to rely on the chaff that I've got. Fine.
Is there any more chaff up here? No, but there's stingers, which I also need. Fuck you! Okay. I'm just gonna run around trying to see how much ammo I can grab around here. If any. Don't know how much of it has respawned. Well, there's a ration at least, so that's something. Thirty-five stingers, that should be enough, right? There's some chaff, excellent. La, 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 la. Maybe there's something down here as well. Ah, just famous and so calm. Not useful. And it's not like... There's still stuff down here, right? That's one time only. Nope, there's a ration. Good, that was worth it. Any more stuff over here? I'll need to fill up. Well, those aren't going to be useful. Oh, that might be useful. Hooray! More chaff grenades! And some stinger missiles. Also useful. Alright, I'm probably as ready as I can get. I've played all the Metal Gear games that aren't on handheld consoles, since you're asking. I've only played a little bit of Peace Walker. Okay, where's Soldier Boy at? He's there. Time to crank him out of existence. Hello, Soldier Boy. No? Okay. We're gonna save a lot. <laughs> Snake, Naomi's under arrest. What the hell is happening over there? What's the colonels, the colonels, the colonels, the colonels, the colonels, the colonels, the colonels? No. Okay, good. Oh, Jesus, I thought it was crashing again. I thought it was crashing again. God damn it. La 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 la. 
dramatic reveal of a thing we already knew. So am I wrong, or can you... Yeah, you can't. Okay. Hey, Otacon, a little help here? Saving again. See, am I full on life? No, I'm not. So. All right, fine. No? Okay. <laughs> Come on, really? I'm trying to cheat here. That's a clear shot. I'm shooting right at him! And I can't use Nikita missiles because the game knows. Eh. What if I... Yeah, move back a little. I know I can't. Like, this isn't possible to do, but... And it's a complete waste of stinger missiles. Fine. Okay. No way to cheat. Is everything all right, Snake? Well, mostly. Probably shouldn't save here, actually, with the wasted missiles and all. Liquid. Why is he shirtless? Because Liquid is just hey, like that. Hey. That's That's just how Liquid is. Anyway, finally we're back to it. And I don't think you can... There it is. Ow. And I don't know how the fuck you're supposed to outrun those missiles. I think you're just supposed to chaff him constantly. I'm greedy. I'm way too greedy. I'm way too greedy. I shouldn't be so greedy, but I'm greedy. There's my chaff there. Okay. 
Come on. Surely he must run out of missiles at some point. Oh, fuck off! Yeah, that's what I was trying to get him to do. I was trying to make him... <sighs> Too close. I was trying to make him try and stomp me. Because that's easier to deal with. That didn't hit me. Come on. I was doing so okay. Come on, do something else. Use your fucking machine gun. Yeah. I'm dead. I'm done. Yes! Jesus! No! Fuck off! Fuck you! Because it's not that hard to dodge the missiles, you just have to go towards him. But then you get into range of the fucking laser. And you can't hit him with stingers when you're too close. So... It's a bit of a shed. Well, at least that didn't damage me much.
I'm always too close. It's pissing me off. Okay, let's try more chaff and circling around the bastard. Uh oh, shit, that's not enough. It's enough! We got him, finally. Jesus. Don't crash. Thank you, good. Ninjas versus Mechas. Great box. The name from long ago. It sounds better than Deep Throat. So it is, Carol. You're the terrible snake. You haven't aged well. I'll send you back to hell! Oh yeah, no, no big deal. Just have that conversation while that machine is raging. So no, I can't shoot.
everyone else. Fighting was the only thing, the only thing I was good at. But at least I always fought for what I believed in. Snake, farewell. You have so many guns, Snake. Do you not want to shoot at the completely unarmored man up in the cockpit? No? Okay. Because, of course, we need the drama. Foolish man. He prayed for death, and it found him. You see, you can't protect anyone, not even yourself. Die! Round two. Uh, let's just do that and... Oh, piss off. So here you can use stun grenades um, to get away from liquid. And do that. And it's not like directly an exploit, but it felt like one when I figured out that you can hit him from like behind. Like that. You just have to try not get seen until he settles down into a search pattern, and then... It doesn't always lock on either, by the way. Missed me. Right in the throat. You can also avoid him like that and make him miss you, but that's a little harder to do sometimes. Yeah, but this, this section of the fight is substantially easier than the other one. Come on. There we go. Finally lost me. Because see, even if it doesn't lock on, you can still do damage. One more shot. It's so ironic that this giant walking tank, like, is so vulnerable to, like, a dude just going between its legs. There we go.
You took like 15 stinger missiles to the cockpit, dude. How the hell are you still alive? And walking. Oh well. That wasn't the hardest fight, though. Sleeping as usual. A snake. Liquid. You're still alive. I won't die. As long as you still live. Too bad. It looks like your revolution was a failure. Just because you've destroyed Metal Gear doesn't mean I am done fighting. Fighting? What are you really after? A world where warriors like us are honored as we once were. As we should be. That was Big Boss's fantasy. It was his dying wish. <sighs> when he was young, during the Cold War, the world needed men like us. We were valued then. We were desired. But things oh, are different now. With all the liars and hypocrites running the world, war isn't what it used to be. We're losing our place in a world that no longer needs us. A world that now spurns our very existence. You should know that as well as I do. After I launch this weapon and get our billion dollars, we'll be able to bring chaos and honor back to this world gone soft. One billion dollars. Conflict will conflict. New hatreds will arise. Then we'll steadily expand our sphere of Influence. But as long as there are people, there will always be war. But the problem is balance. Uh oh. Father knew what type of a balance was best. Hang on. Is that the only reason? <laughs> there we go. Isn't it reason enough for warriors such as us? I don't want that kind of world. Ha! You lie. So why are you here then? Why do you continue to follow your orders while your superiors betray you? Why did you come here? <clears throat> well, I'll tell you then. You enjoy all the killing. That's why. What? Are you denying it? Haven't you already killed most of my comrades? Th that was... <laughs> I watched your face when you did it. It was filled with the joy of battle. You're wrong. There's a killer inside you. You don't have to deny it. We were created to be that way. Created? Les enfants terribles. The terrible children. That's what the project was called. It started in the 1970s. Their plan was to artificially create the most powerful soldier possible. The person that they chose as the model was the man known then as the greatest living soldier in the world. Big Boss. But Father was wounded in combat and already in a coma when they brought him in. So they created us from his cells. With a combination of 20th century analog cloning and the Super Baby Method. Super Baby Method? They fertilized an egg with one of Father's cells and then let it divide into eight clone babies. Then they transferred the clones to someone's uterus and later intentionally aborted six of the fetuses to encourage strong fetal growth. You and I were originally octuplets. Octuplets? Yes. The other six of our brothers were sacrificed to make us. We were accomplices in murder before the day we were even born. So it was you and I. Two fertilized eggs with exactly the same DNA. But they weren't finished yet. They used me as a guinea pig to create a phenotype in which all of the dominant genes were expressed to create you. I got all of the recessive genes. You took everything from me before I was even born. But you and I aren't his only children. What? The genome soldiers. They too are his progeny, carrying on his genetic legacy. But they're different. They're digital. With the completion of the Human Genome Project, the mysteries of humanity were laid bare. 
Thanks to Father's DNA, they were able to identify more than 60 soldier genes responsible for everything from strategic thinking to the proverbial killer instinct. Those soldier genes were transplanted into the members of the next generation special forces. That's how they became the genome soldiers. <laughs> That's right. The genome soldiers that you've been killing are our brothers with the same genes as ours. The genome soldiers? That's right. They are our brothers, created artificially through the alignment of nucleotides to mimic our father's genes. They too are the product of numerous sacrifices. Sacrifices? Human experiments! 1991, the Gulf War. The military secretly injected soldiers with the soldier genes. The Gulf War syndrome that hundreds of thousands of returning soldiers complained about was a side effect of it. Ha! Everyone knows that the Gulf War syndrome was caused by exposure to depleted uranium used in the anti-tank rounds. <laughs> and that was just a cover story issued by the Pentagon. Just to be clear, First none of that is, like, it was, it was caused by the uranium. Then chemical or biological weapons. The poison gas detection units and the anti-serin injections, they were all just a cover-up of the secret genetic experiments. So then, the so-called Gulf War babies that have been reported by Gulf War veterans are... Yes. They, too, are our brothers and sisters. So the genome soldiers mean that the experiments were a success? Success? Don't be a fool. They're a complete failure. We are on the verge of extinction. What? Have you ever heard of the asymmetry theory? Nature tends to favor... Now he goes on for a while. Those species which have gone extinct all show signs of symmetry. The genome soldiers suffer from the same problem. Signs of symmetry. So do I. As do you. That's right. We are all on the verge of death at the genetic level. We don't know when or what type of disease will occur. That's why we need the old man's genetic information. You want Big Boss's DNA so you can save your family? It's very touching. In nature, family members don't mate with each other, and yet they help each other to survive. Do you know why? It increases the chance that their genes will be passed on to a new generation. Altruism among blood relatives is a response to natural selection. It's called the selfish gene theory. You're telling it's me also your wrong. genes are ordering you to save the genome soldiers? You can't fight your genes. It's fate. All living things are born for the sole purpose of passing on their parents' genes. Also That's wrong. I'll follow what my genes tell me. And then I'm going to go beyond. In order to break the curse of my heritage. And to do that, first... I will kill you. Look behind you. Meryl! Is she alive? I'm not sure. She was alive a few hours ago. Poor girl kept calling your name. Meryl. Stupid woman. Falling in love with a man who doesn't even have a name. I have a name. No! We have no past, no future, and even if we did, it wouldn't be truly ours. You and I are just copies of our father, Big Boss. Let Meryl go. As soon as we've finished our business, we're almost out of time. You're talking about Fox Die. No. It seems now that the Pentagon knows that Metal Gear is destroyed. They've arrived at a decision. They won't even need a VDA. If you want the details, why don't you ask your precious Colonel Campbell? We're not done. <laughs> Colonel, can you hear me? Yes, I'm listening. What is the Pentagon trying to do? Colonel, answer me. The Secretary of Defense has taken over active control of this operation. He's on his way there by AWACS. What for? 
to bomb the place. What? Not only that, B-2 bombers just lifted off from Galena Air Force Base. They're carrying B-6113 surface-piercing tactical nuclear bombs. What? Metal Gear is destroyed. Tell the Secretary of Defense. The Secretary of Defense heard that Naomi double-crossed us, and he's worried about Fox Die. Now that there's no more danger of a nuclear strike from Metal Gear, he's going to do whatever's necessary to cover up the truth of what really happened here. He's going to drop a nuclear bomb to vaporize all the evidence along with anyone who knows anything. Don't worry, Snake. I'll stop the nuclear strike. How? I may only be a figurehead here, but I'm still officially in command of this mission. If I issue an order to delay the strike, it'll confuse the chain of command and at least buy you some time. It'll give you a chance to escape. But, Colonel, if you do that... It's okay, Snake. The truth is, Foxhound was already the subject of an undercover investigation. Merrill was transferred to this base just before the terrorist attack as a way of manipulating me. Those bastards. I'm sorry. They forced me to cooperate in exchange for her life. You better get out of there, Snake. Are you sure? It'll be bad for you. Don't worry. It's the least I can do for you, after all the lies. Colonel. I'm ordering them to cancel the bombing run. After that, there's no turning back. What? What are you doing? What? Snake! Mei Ling, what happened to the Colonel? I don't believe it. What happened? Snake, the Colonel! Uh-oh. Just a sec. I'm just gonna try and... Campbell has been relieved of duty. No, no, no. Don't crash. Hang on. This is the Secretary of there we Defense, go. Jim Houseman. Put the Colonel back on. He's been placed under arrest for leaking top secret information and for the crime of high treason. Ridiculous. Yes, he's a ridiculous man. He truly believed that he was in command of this operation. You bastard. There won't be a speck of evidence left. I'm sure the President would want the same thing. President ordered this? The president is a busy man. I have complete authority here. How do you plan on explaining a nuclear attack on Alaska to the media? Don't worry. We've prepared a convincing cover story. We'll simply say that the terrorists exploded a nuclear device. Smart. You'll be murdering everyone here. The scientists, the genome army, everyone. Donald. The DARPA chief is already dead. So, you didn't mean to kill the DARPA chief after all. He was my friend. And you could care less about what happens to everybody else, huh? Well, if you give me the optic disc, I might consider saving them. What are you talking about? Metal Gear's test data. Donald was supposed to bring it back. I don't have it. I see. Oh well, that's okay. You two are an embarrassment from the 1970s. Our country's dirty little secret. You can't be allowed to live. Well, the bombs will be dropping soon, and you two have a lot uh, of don't crash. Up to do. Don't crash. Farewell. Okay. <laughs> oh, bugger. Don't. No way out for us. There we go. Oof. Let's finish this before the airstrike. <sighs> you stole everything from me. Only your death can satisfy me. Only your death can return to me what is rightly mine. She'll make a beautiful sacrifice for our final battle. You see this? It will be the time limit for our final battle. This nuclear module is set to detonate at the precise moment of her death. If you win, you might still be able to save her. So yeah, this is fun. Could enjoy one brief moment of love. 
before the end. If you cross this line, you fall. At this height, it will kill even you. Shut the fuck up and fight me, Liquid. Have at you, Snake. Have at you. What's wrong, Snake? Ow. Okay. Better move fast here. Right, he does that. The thing about Liquid in this fight is he's just randomly invulnerable to things. And you have to try and counter him. It's a lot like the ninja fight. in that way, in that he can just sort of randomly decide to be invulnerable to things. Yeah, there's no way I'm beating him in the time limit. Damn it. And I don't have any items whatsoever. Or any gear, or fuck off! Anything that can help me. What's wrong, snake? Get back up. Damn it! Aiming in this fucking game. Cutting it very close. Yeah, no, this is a fail. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shut the fuck up, Liquid. It pisses me off that he can dock, duck, and then he just becomes invulnerable to everything. So in case you were wondering what the hand-to-hand um, -hand fight with Ocelot in Metal Gear Solid 4, or the, the that final fight in Metal Gear Solid 4 is referencing, it's this. It's trying to recreate this. And as you can see, like sometimes I hit him, I can get a three-hit combo off on him, and sometimes I hit him one time and he gets invulnerability frames. And I don't know what the system is that underlies that. Ah, shoulder charge. You're out of time. Yeah, no shit. Ugh. 
Speedy, speedy, speedy. Okay, I might make it this time. If I don't do a lot more mistakes like that. Okay, no shoulder charging. Random invincibility. Completely random invincibility frames. Fuck off. What's wrong, snake? <laughs> nice shot. Piss. Come on. It's going to blow. Yeah, I know. What's wrong, yeah, I'm losing this one as well. To jank ass shitty hitboxes. Gotta be shitting me. Finally, Jesus. Whew. His iframes are so random, it's so annoying. Another thing that's better in the remake. Snake, nuclear bomb. Snake. Meryl? Snake. Snake, is that you? Snake, oh, you're alive. Thank God. Meryl. Meryl, are you okay? Are you okay? Is that all you can say? Meryl. It must have been terrible. Bombers are coming, Snake. Not bad. I didn't give in to the torture. Torture? Bombers, Snake. It's even worse than that. I was fighting too. Just like you. You're a strong woman. Fighting them made me feel closer to you. God damn it, Kojima. I felt like you were there with me. Kojima. It gave me the strength to go on. But I was scared. Kojima. I'm sorry. Don't say that. But it made me realize something. During all the pain and shame, there was one thing I was sure of. A single hope that I held on to. And that hope kept me alive. Snake. I wanted to see you again. Kojima, you're so bad at this. That's my Kodak. Snake, it's me. Otacon, good news. Meryl's okay. All right. You saved her, man. 
Good job. I got some bad news, too. We're about to be bombed. Oh, boy. I guess we're considered expendable. Is there a way out of here? A way out? Uh, yeah. You can take the loading tunnel to the surface. There's a parking garage right next to you. The tunnel leads from there to the surface. The door in front? No. It's a small entrance to the west of that door. How about the security? I just unlocked it. Who do you think you're talking to? I'll take care of security along your escape route, too. What are you going to do? Me? I... I'll stay here. Are you crazy? I need a little more time to take care of your escape route. But... Unlocking the security doors is difficult work. Only I can do it. Otacon. Don't worry. I'm staying here. It's my own decision. Otacon. This is a hardened shelter, but they're going to use a surface-piercing nuclear bomb. It won't hold. I'm through regretting the past. Life isn't all about loss, you know. Snake, I'm a complete person now. I've found a reason to live. Good. Don't die on me. Same to you. Take care of Merrill, okay? I will. Okay, I gotta go. I promise I'll do something about your escape route. Thanks. Thanks? Well, that sounds nice. I believe in you. Thanks, Snake. Yeah, if if you give in to the torture, then Meryl dies. So. What about him? Where's Otakon? <laughs> Otakon. <laughs> he's, he's fighting right now with his old self to be the man he wants to be. He's fighting for us too. Yeah. And I don't want it to be in vain. Run, run, run. Me too. Run. Oh no, just just walk slowly, okay. That's fine. Meryl. Yeah, Meryl is not a very strong character in this game. Or in any of the games that she's been in, because Kojima can't write her any other way than that. She has to be a damsel. Like, no matter what he tries to do, he can't help but write her as a damsel in distress. Started. I must be heavy. Looks like we're not gonna have a love scene after all. Looks that way. Too bad. <laughs> yeah, you're very casual about the nuclear yeah. weapon that's coming towards you. It's freezing outside. You need some clothes. There's my sneaking suit. Hurry up. What about Meryl? You're wearing a fucking tank top. What are you talking about? Oh, you need clothes, Snake. Hurry. Anyway. Mm, looking good, Snake. <laughs> uh, Kojima, very bad at writing Meryl. And yeah, there is a better scene. It's I. It's better with Otacon. Like it's it's a more satisfying, interesting friendship between Hurry. the two of them. Oop, ration. Neat that. I'll drive. Damn, a surveillance camera. Damn, no keys. Okay. Also, no guns. No shit, didn't mean to do that. Why are they still coming after me? Like, just evacuate, you morons. Okay. Sounds like the audio is glitching out again. Okay, it's okay now.
listen, Meryl, the aiming on this thing is absolutely fucking abysmal. It really should be liquid. I'm gonna die. Like, if he gets one shot off at me, I'm dead. Yeah, there we go. The aiming is so bad on that thing. Hurry! It's just, it's so comically, ridiculously fucking bad. Uh... Another ration, thank you. There we go. Piss off! Fire that machine gun with your weapon burning! Shoot him, Snake! Snake, hold on! Ugh! Oh, that's better. Thanks for that tip in chat. I didn't actually know you could do that. First person aiming is a major advantage here. Thanks for not telling me anything about that video game. To the best of my knowledge, there is no way to dodge, by the way. I'm still super low on life. Well, this guy has apparently infinite health cheats.
Swear to God, if the game crashes on me after we successfully escape, I'll be so pissed. Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck off and die! Uh. Hurry! <laughs> Hurry! Oh, there's a third. There's a third ration. I missed it. There's a third ration. God damn it! Didn't know that. That will be really useful next time I die for bullshit, bullshit reasons. Okay, this time, this time, for sure. Yeah, hooray for me. <laughs> Follow me, set me free, trust me and we will escape from the city. I'll make it through from me to you. Follow me. Speed of sound, got places to go, got to follow my rainbow. Can't stick around, got to keep moving on. Okay, this time I have two full rations for this bullshit, so. Can I just shoot his fucking wheels? Like, here I just feel like it's completely constant double KOs, where he hits me and I hit him at the exact same time. Don't crash. <sighs> Fucking finally. Oh my god. Meryl. That ending sequence, I forgot how frustrating it is. Yeah. Just a little 
shook up. Meryl, can you move? Uh, uh, it's no good. I can't move. What happened to Liquid? I can't see him either. Liquid's dead. No, he's not. Uh-oh. Snake! Uh-oh. <laughs> That's a familiar sound. Now the justification is that Liquid is as durable as the player character, Snake, who, of course, like, we can take quite a bit of punishment, frankly. If he's dead, that means... Don't say it, Snake. What happened to the air raid? No stealth bombers in sight. Snake, can you hear me? Colonel, are you okay? Colonel, what happened? The Secretary of Defense has been arrested. Early retirement. Arrested? I was able to get into contact with the President. Metal Gear, the training exercise, all of it. It was all the Secretary of Defense acting alone. Acting alone? What happened to the air raid and the nuclear strike? The orders were rescinded. The F-117s and the B-2 Spirits have returned to the base. Once again, I have complete authority over this operation. I see. Washington isn't stupid enough to use nukes to cover up a few secrets. I wonder about that. In any case, the danger's over. Thanks, Snake. Colonel, you can rest easy. Merrill's fine. Really? Thanks. Thank you, Snake. Snake, I'm sorry. I, I kept a lot of things from you. It's okay, Colonel. Snake, I'm not a Colonel. <laughs> oh, that's right. I've got a present for you. There's a snowmobile close to you. Mei Ling saw it on the satellite photos. This time of year, the glaciers are pretty calm. You should be able to ride right out of there. I'll bet the boys at the DIA and the NSA never expect you to come home alive. Me neither. I better not show my face around here. No danger of that. You two officially died after your jeep sank into the ocean. That's not too far from the truth. Also, there's a helicopter waiting for you on Fox Island. Dr. Hal Emmerich should be somewhere on the base. I want someone to bring him in. I understand. Leave it to me. Okay, Roy. Are you going to be okay? Don't worry. I've got an insurance policy. A hard copy of all Mei Ling's data. As long as I've got that, you, me, and Mei Ling will be fine. The battery on these nanomachines will run out soon. They won't be able to follow us. I guess we won't meet again. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll pay you a visit sometime. Really? I look forward to that. Roy, just tell me one thing. What? About Fox die. Meryl will be fine. She wasn't included in its programming. What about me? It killed Liquid. Naomi said that she wants to talk to you face to face about that. How is she? Don't worry. Mei Ling is with her right now. I'm switching over to Naomi. Snake, it's me. Naomi. I heard about my brother. I'm sorry. But he had one last message he wanted to say to you. He told me to tell you to forget about him and to go on with your own life. Liar. Said that? Yeah. He also said he'll always love you. Naomi, your brother just saved you, me, and the whole world. He fought with every ounce of strength in his body. Maybe. Maybe now he's finally found some peace. 
He wasn't really my brother anymore. Ever since he fought with you in Zanzibar, he's been like a ghost. A ghost looking for a place to die. <laughs> Naomi, Liquid died from Fox Die too. What about me? When am I gonna go? That's up to you. What do you mean? Everybody dies when their time is up. Yeah, so when's mine up? It's up to you how you use the time left to you. Live, Snake. It's all I can say to you. Each person is born with their fate written into their own genetic code. It's unchangeable, immutable. But that's not all there is to life. I finally realized that. I told you before the reason that I was interested in genes and DNA. Because I wanted to know who I was. Where I came from. I thought that if I analyzed my DNA, I could find out who I was, who my parents were. And I thought that if I knew that, then I'd know what path I should take in life. But I was wrong. I didn't find anything. I didn't learn anything. Just like with the genome soldiers, you can input all the genetic information, but that doesn't make them into the strongest soldiers. The most we can say about DNA is that it governs a person's potential strengths, potential destiny. You mustn't allow yourself to be chained to fate, to be ruled by your genes. Humans can choose the type of life they want to live. Snake, whether or not you're in the Fox Die program isn't important. Kinda the important is. important thing is that you choose life. And then live. Don't you think, Snake? Don't worry. I'm going to choose life, too. Until today, I've always looked for a reason to live. But from here on, I'm going to just live. We'll talk about all of that in a little bit. Genes exist to pass down our hopes and dreams for the future through our children. Because there's like 30 more cutscenes. <laughs> Living is a link to the future. That's how all life works. Loving each other, teaching each other. That's how we can change the world. I finally realized it. The true meaning of life. Thank you, Snake. Look, I found this. Let's keep it as a reminder. Of what? A reminder of a successful mission? Or the first time we met? A reminder of how to live. Huh? Until today, I've lived only for myself. Survival has been the only thing I cared about in my life. That's, that's not just you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I only felt truly alive there we when go. I was staring death in the face. I don't know. Maybe it's written into my genes. What about now? What do your genes say about your future now? Maybe it's time I live for someone else. Someone else? Yeah. Someone like you. Maybe that's the real way to live. So, where to, Snake? David. My name's David. Okay. So where to, Dave? Hmm. I think it's time we look for a new path in life. A new path? 
a new purpose. Will we find it? We'll find it. I know we'll find it. What are those? Caribou. To the Aleutians, the caribou is a symbol of life. It'll be spring here soon. For us too. Yeah. Spring brings new life to everything. It's a time for hope. I've lived here a long time, but Alaska has never looked more beautiful. The sky, the sea, the caribou, and most of all, you. <laughs> Kojima, you're not good at writing romance. Come on. Let's enjoy life. But this is the game's, as it were, happy ending. And it's also the canonical one, because both Meryl and Otacon survive. But the Otacon, like, if Meryl dies, if you give her up during the torture, then you have that, you have a scene at the end with Otacon, and it's way better. In the 1980s, there were more than 60,000 nuclear warheads in the world at all times. The total destructive power amounted to one million times that of the Hiroshima bomb. In January 1993, START II was signed, and the United States and Russia agreed to reduce the number of deployed strategic nuclear weapons to 3,000 and 3,500. But as of 1998, there still exist 26,000 nuclear warheads in the world. Which is one of the things, like I said, Kojima is very, very concerned with nuclear proliferation and the fallout of the Cold War. This is very much a Cold War story from, like, the later end of the Cold War. So let's talk about all of that. All of it. And there's still, by the way, there's still a scene after the credits, so stick around. Um, so the game, as you could probably tell by those final scenes with Liquid especially, and with Na Dr. Naomi, what Kojima is interested in exploring here is the question of genetic destiny. Like, whether we are deterministically determined, like, who we are is determined deterministically by our genes, by our circumstances, or whether, like, human choice, whether the human mind has a real role in determining what a person is and who we become. And that's what the whole thing with the genome soldiers, with Liquid being a clone of Snake, and the whole thing about everyone being sort of clones of Big Boss, all of that, and all of this discussion about Snake as someone who can't live any other way than being a soldier, all of that ties into that. It's all about exploring the idea, of, well, what if you have this person who is the, the clone of the greatest soldier ever, who's full of soldier genes? Is there still a choice for a person there? And the game comes down very hard on the yes side. Of course there's a choice, because Snake... Liquid Snake and Solid Snake are two different people. Like, that's something that becomes incredibly clear over the course of the game, is that despite having pretty much the exact same genes, they are different people. And their choices are different, and the outcomes of those choices are different. Um, so that's, like, that's the major underlying thing, is, like, the question for Snake as a character is, like, can he find another way to live except warfare? And like where li with Liquid, it's like, no, I'm determined by my genes. My genes are my destiny. Therefore, I must be a soldier. I must try to recreate Zanzibar and Outer Heaven um, because that's what Big Boss would have done. And I'm a clone of Big Boss. And Snake, on the other hand, is someone who's constantly struggling with the drive to try and not be that. Like he, he begins the game having fled from everything to Alaska to live there as a dog musher to avoid being dragged back into war. And when war then comes to find him, like his process through the through the mission is trying to find a way to escape that cycle of violence. And that's something that I think the game is very good at. That's something I think its story actually succeeds at is like finding an interesting way to use a game like this to explore that central question, especially in the context of like, cause those genetic enhancement therapies and stuff like that with the genome soldiers and blah, blah, blah. That's not that too far away from actual technology, from actual, like, gene therapy as a means to create super soldiers is a thing that has been explored in reality. And the question of designer babies and all that stuff, that's still, like, a current issue. And there is that question of genetic destiny because, like, if it becomes possible to imbue certain people with a certain genetic destiny from birth, like, there's real questions about freedom in that. 
like what exactly freedom looks like and what it is. What the game is less good at, as we saw here in the ending with Meryl, which was... Oh boy! <laughs> what Kojima has always been rather bad at is writing relationships between men and women in a believable way. He's always struggled with it. Um, and also trying to write as like a sincerity outside of the constant references to technical uh, details and research that con that like that characterizes so much else of his writing. He's gotten better at it since then. But oh boy. <laughs> it's it's a rough ending the one with Meryl. I recommend you look up the one with Otacon uh, just, just to see it, because it's also quite good. But yeah, those questions of genetic destiny are central. Um, and I think they're explored very well, especially for a 1997 game, like or 1998 game. Like This is like one year after Final Fantasy VII, right? And it's, at the time, this was perhaps one of the most ambitious explorations of like a, cin a cinematic storytelling in gaming. And no one else had ever made a story that was so ambitious in terms of the kinds of themes and ideas that it wanted to tackle. Which is part of why Kojima became such a... an icon in the industry. It's because, like, no one else had the balls to try and do something like that at the time. Um, and that was well-deserved, I think, that he became an icon for it. <sighs> so... The other part that this game is very concerned with is nuclear prol proliferation and the, like the fallout of the Cold War, because and that ties into the question of genetic destiny as the, sort of weakly, but it's still there in the sense of is the world doomed to be at war forever? Like, are we doomed to destroy ourselves? Which is what he's trying to sort of tie in with the whole fox die genetic destiny thing is like. Are we ultimately, because of the way we're programmed as human beings, doomed to destroy ourselves, whether through, like, going through our genetic destiny and doing bad shit, or by annihilating ourselves and each other in nuclear war? Which is a question that he returns to over and over and over and over again. Like, Metal Gear 2, 3, and 4, and 5 all concern themselves with that central question, especially expressed through nuclears, uh, nuclear proliferation. Humans can choose the type of life they want to live. The important thing is that you choose life. And then live. And that's why Naomi doesn't tell Snake whether he has the fox die virus or not. Because every, every living thing is doomed to die. All of yes, us. Sir. Anyway. The entire unit was wiped out. Those two are still alive. The Vector? Yes, sir. Fox die should become activated soon, right on schedule. Yes, sir, I recovered all of Rex's dummy warhead data. No, sir, my cover is intact. Nobody knows who I really am. Yes, the DARPA chief knew my identity, but he's been disposed of. Yes, the inferior one was the winner after all. Yeah, that's also a lot. That's right. Until the very end, Liquid thought he was the inferior one. Yes, sir, I agree completely. It takes a well-bounced individual such as yourself to rule the world. No, sir. No one knows that you were the third one. Solidus. What should I do about the woman? Yes, sir. I'll keep her under surveillance. Don't crash. Yes. Thank you. Goodbye. Mr. President. Okay. There we go. So that's the teaser for Metal Gear Solid 2 and its story. But yes, that's the other thing, is... Snake, um... Was not was not the superior clone. He was the inferior clone, which is the final fuck you to Liquid's life philosophy. This whole oh, our genetic destiny determines blah blah blah. I'm the inferior clone. So uh, wine, wine, wine. I I was hard done by by my genes. No, Liquid, you stupid asshole. You got all the dominant genes. You're fine. Snake had the inferior genes and managed to win anyway because it what matters is the choices that you make. And then Ocelot teases the stuff about, oh, yes, it takes a well-balanced individual such as yourself. You're the third one. 
And that's what we get in Metal Gear Solid 2 with Solidus Snake, who's one of the major villains in that one. Which is a whole other can of worms. <sighs> but yes, that's Metal Gear Solid 1. And that's the reason why Naomi doesn't tell Snake when Fox Die is going to go off. It's because... It doesn't matter. Like, we're all time-limited. We're all going to die at some point. And you can't walk around with a timer in your head that says, I only have so much time left. Because that's no way to live as a human being. We're all going to die, inevitably. But you kind of have to just, okay, so what am I going to do with the time that's available to me? And now I have the bandana, which gives me infinite ammo. <laughs> Bush is the one shown in the Animaniacs opening. No, that's Bill Clinton. Bush's predecessor. Or, well, sort of. Not quite, but yeah. Anyway. That was Metal Gear Solid 1. Whew. Like I said, I recommend going to go look up the uh, Otacon ending, because it's quite it's a lot better than the Meryl ending, which was very saccharine and very good ending, and didn't really work, at least as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sticking with me for this extra long stream to finish this particular video game. I very much appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, over on the Discord, uh, uh, we'll be putting up the next vote for what game we'll be playing next. And, uh, yeah, if you, if you guys want to play the game, I recommend the remake. Like, its cutscenes are dumber, but, but it's also a lot less clunky. <laughs> like, the escape sequence is a lot easier. <sighs> so, yeah, if you enjoyed hanging out in the world of Metal Gear Solid with me, then please do remember to hit the like, comment, and subscribe buttons. Or any one of them, or none of them, depending on how you feel. But hitting the buttons makes the YouTube algorithm go, Hey, people are engaging with that video. That means we should probably not kill the guy who's making them. So that would be nice if you want to do that. And if not, that's completely okay as well. Um, I have a Patreon, I have a merchandise store, I have a tip jar. If you want to avail yourself of any of those, then you should feel very free to do so. Or if not, that's completely fine. There's also memberships on this channel. So if you want special uh, emoji during the stream that you want to use in chat, that's available. If you want a little special icon next to your name that gets cooler over time, that's available with memberships as well. They cost like a dollar a month. So they're like the cheapest, one of the cheapest options if you want to support me. And if not, that's completely okay. Thank you very much for watching. Voting starts on the next game over on the Discord soon. Have a wonderful evening, everybody.